I'm now very pleased to introduce our student speaker, Sophie Lucas Suzanne Rossio. Sophie earned a degree in neuroscience from the University of California at Los Angeles prior to joining us here at the UC Davis School of Medicine. While here, she was involved in the Klingenstein Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellowship, Alpha Omega Alpha, and Gold Humanism Honor Society, and she actually received several awards yesterday at a ceremony. Outside of medicine, she has a passion for all things related to true crime, such as reading crime novels and watching crime documentaries. And maybe that's not surprising because there is, the analytical skills needed in medicine are not that different from those needed to, to resolve crimes. Not surprisingly, she has plans to become a child and adolescent forensic psychiatrist, and she's heading back to UCLA to the Neuropsychiatric Institute for Psychiatry Residency next month. That institute, like UC Davis, is part of a behavioral health center of excellence, so I'm sure she'll have many opportunities to go back and link back to us here at UC Davis while at UCLA. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sophie Rossi. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. One of the benefits of being a medical student here is that you have access to see some of this generation's best minds perform here at the Mondavi Center. Writers, singers, speakers, comedians, musicians. In this very auditorium, I have cried with author David Sedaris and laughed with podcaster Sarah Koenig. Big shoes have stood on this stage, and today is no exception. I am honored to stand among this outstanding group of graduates. Thank you for being here. Like the proverbial fire pit, this auditorium has been a meeting place for one of the most basic human contacts, storytelling. Whether stories are told through film, literature, music, or overheard in your neighborhood coffee shop, we can't help but lend an ear and listen. We're all guilty of watching our favorite movie for the tenth time, or staying in our car after we pull into our driveway to finish the last bit of our radio station. Stories move us. They give us that momentary suspension of disbelief and give us vision into a world that is so different from our own. They give us empathy, change our minds, make us feel alive. Even our own story is a culmination of experiences that connect us with the people around us. At times, our own story can feel like a tragedy, at times a comedy, at times a love story. But today, it feels like a success story of 146 medical students who overcame so many obstacles to stand here on this stage. There are so many stories I could share with you today about the journey of medical school, the heartbreak of losing my first patient, the feeling after delivering my first baby, giving my first cancer diagnosis. But today, I wanted to share a story with you about someone who, interestingly enough, is not affiliated with medicine, and is someone who actually I never personally met, but who changed the way that I approached the world. Here's the story. About three years ago, around the start of medical school, I received a gift from my boyfriend's mom, Alona. The gift was an old jacket of hers, French, with about 12 pockets, some overlapping, some hidden in other pockets, some in very odd places. Doesn't make much sense. Like I said, it's French. But anyways, one day I was putting something away, I was trying out a new pocket, and I found something very unusual. At first, I thought it was a Polaroid, but my boyfriend photographer was very quick to correct me that it was in fact a slide, a 1961 Kodachrome slide. When I asked my boyfriend's mom about it, she remembered that she had seen it lying in the street in Los Gatos, California, and she had picked it up in good faith with the intention of returning it to its owner. You can see the slide up here. Uh, upside down, of course. It says, Lieutenant Lounsbury and Lieutenant Commander Thayer, Portofino, Italy, December 1960. So next step was Google. And let me tell you something, it was not an easy find. When I went on Google, it generated 150,000 results in 0.58 seconds. Anyways, I'll save you the pain and fast forward to the hours of searching, but luckily, I did find someone who I believed was one of the men in this slide. His name was John Howard Thayer. And it turns out, Howie Thayer was the center of an amazing story. 
This picture was taken in December of 1960, but in March of 1952, John Howard Thayer was Lieutenant Junior Grade, a Sky Raider on the aircraft carrier USS Valley Forge in the Sea of Japan. On March 22nd, Thayer's squadron was on attack, each flying their own plane, when Thayer suddenly heard a distress call coming in over his radio. He heard, I'm blind, for God's sake, help me, I'm blind. At 12,000 feet, an enemy anti-aircraft shell had exploded in another Sky Raider's cockpit, Kenneth Schechter, who coincidentally happened to be Thayer's roommate. From the newspapers I read, Howie Thayer made an instant decision that it was his duty that he would go and rescue this blinded pilot. He climbed with full throttle to around 10,000 feet, where the injured pilot, barely conscious, was flying. You can imagine the injured pilot's relief when he heard his best friend answering back over the radio. Thayer guided his friend, get your nose down, pull back a little, you're doing all right now. At 200 miles an hour, for over 100 miles, Schechter, blind, bleeding, nauseous, released his remaining bombs and amazingly successfully landed on a dirt landing strip without landing gear because Thayer guided him. Schechter would later say it was a perfect landing. No fire, no pain, no strain, the best landing I ever made. The injured pilot, Schechter, ultimately regained vision in his left eye, but his piloting career was over. He received multiple accolades for his brave descent. A movie, Men of the Fighting Lady, was even based on the famous Saturday Evening Post article, The Case of the Blinded Pilot. He died in 2013. After the incredible landing, Thayer, the man in our slide, remained in the military. Here he is in Portofino, Italy in December of 1960, and he died one month later in January of 1961, guiding another pilot with electrical failure. He crashed into the Mediterranean Sea. He was largely unrecognized for his actions until 2009, when he posthumously received the Distinguished Flying Cross 57 years after his heroic deed. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I sharing this story at my medical school graduation? And there are a couple of reasons. First, I chose this story because it's about the meaning of success in the context of sacrifice and the importance of single instrumental individuals in the context of others' achievement. All of us, the 142 graduates standing here today, at some point or another, have felt like this blinded, bleeding, terrified pilot alone at 10,000 feet. We have felt like there were no options, and then out of nowhere, someone comes to our rescue. To make it where we are today, standing on this stage, we have always had someone to guide us. Many of those individuals are sitting in this audience today, and many are not. I want this opportunity to say that we would not be here without you. Today, in this speech, we honor you, those who have sacrificed so much for our success. Thank you. Secondly, to my fellow graduates, just as we have felt like this person in need of guidance, over four years, we have also transitioned to becoming the guide the calm, collected, knowledgeable physician with a sense of duty and responsibility to help those in need. One of the things that stood out to me during my research was this. It was said that when Thayer directed his friend to turn his plane to the right, Thayer on the inside turned right with it. It speaks volumes to how connected Thayer was to his friend in distress. And to me, it sounds a whole lot like the delicate balance and the dance of an ideal patient-physician relationship meeting our patients in their darkest moments, knowing when to put on a brave face, and empathizing with their every move. During this transition to becoming a physician, let us learn to balance this strength with softness, our courage with empathy, and our bravery with silence and reflection. And moreover, let us not only be guides for our patients, but also for our students, our families, and our communities. And my third reason is to emphasize the fact that not getting recognition does not take away from the magnitude of heroic actions. Always remember the impact that one individual can have on your life, whether that be patients who have had an impact on you or you on your patients. Stay humble and remember that one person is never too small to make a difference. I'll conclude with my favorite Latin quote, per aspera ad astra, which means through the thorns to the stars, Congratulations on this wonderful day. And for those of you wondering, yes, I did track down Thayer's family. I got in contact with his son, Bill Thayer, two and a half years after I found the slide. It turned out that that was the last known picture of his father. Thank you. <laughs>